Verizon doesn't seem to be getting as much attention from its droid line of smartphones as it once did. Uh, Samsung seems to be the uh, Android phone maker of choice nowadays, but they, they still release new models, and uh, we have a new one here. It's the Droid Incredible 4G LTE, which is a bit of a mouthful, but uh, let's uh, dive right in. One of the things I find most interesting about this model of Droid Incredible is uh, its size and shape. Uh, you see on the back that it's kind of got a very busy looking back uh, with kind of ridges on here that uh, they're actually a, a little bit ticklish for uh, for my fingers, but uh, it's all all comes down to personal opinion. But the phone is actually roughly the same size as an iPhone, which I find interesting when it seems like more and more Android models are getting to uh, the extra jumbo size screen and everything. But even though it's a smaller phone, it's a little bit of a thicker phone too. Uh, it's a little thicker than the uh, than the iPhone, which I find uh, a little strange. Now, as this is an HTC phone, it is running uh, Sense on top of uh, Android. That's their version of the uh, the Android skin, which uh, I find a, a little bit stiff, but uh, but it works uh, it works fine. Uh, the processor isn't uh, too bad. Whoops and. It does that. It always asks for Wi-Fi, which is another f fun quirk. And let's see if we can get it to load up the, the Tulsa World website. The reception is not uh, the greatest in this, uh, this dark room, but uh, at any rate, the, uh, the processor isn't bad. It's uh, usually fairly smooth. Uh, the Tulsa World's fairly complex website uh, causes it to uh, stutter a little bit sometimes, though. Uh, the video quality I noticed on here was a little choppy. Um, it's the the screen is it, it's kind of a middling s screen. You'll get some uh, some graininess uh, on here as well. Uh, the camera I think is again not uh, not the best camera in the in the world. I mean, its shots are they're fine. I've seen better uh, better shots out there. But what I find interesting. Uh, what I find a little annoying is that uh, when you're in mid light, it's kind of hard to get just the right amount of brightness. Here's a shot of my desk with the flash on, and here it is with uh, the flash off. And it's uh, kind of hard to get just the right amount of lights. And it's uh, while I'm happy that the shutter takes photos instantly, uh, it's pretty easy to take a blurry shot, especially with uh, a, a novice shutter bug like me. Uh, another little quirk I noticed here is that, and I'm sure one of you might be able to correct me, but there is no easy and obvious way to erase apps. I mean, you can dig into the settings and turn them off, stop them from taking up memory, but once you've got it, I mean, it's it doesn't seem like there's an obvious way to uh, to get rid of them. I mean, I'm sure that uh, you know, of course, rooting the phone might do it, but it's. It's not obvious at all. Um, honestly, this this isn't a bad phone, but it's being priced at $150, which seems to me uh, it's kind of like they're trying to straddle the fence between being a good, more a really good, more expensive phone and a less expensive phone. I mean, it almost seems like this it would be worth just paying the extra $50 and getting. Uh, Getting significant improvements other than this, or you know, if you'd rather save money, if you go down to ninety-nine dollars, it doesn't seem like you would generally lose too much over the amount of quality you get here.